What's up guys, it's Zero here, and this is Doki Doki Blue Skies, or welcome back to Doki Doki Blue Skies, fuck. Uh, so yeah, welcome to episode 3 of Doki Doki Blue Skies, and if my uploading schedule is correct, this should be uploaded on the same day as a Just Natsuki episode, meaning this is a double upload, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a double upload. <laughs> the reason why I'm doing a double upload right now is because... Looking at the views that New Skies has been bringing in, it seems like a lot of people actually do like to watch Blue Skies. So I felt as if I don't want to be totally unfair to them and, you know, make them want to wait a whole other day if they really just want to see Blue Skies. So I was like, it's a win-win situation. The people who like just, you know, me for me and just like my content, here you go. You get two videos. For people who specifically just want to watch Blue Skies, here you go. You get this. So it's like, you know, you, so it's a win-win situation. Everyone wins. <laughs> I mean, granted, I guess I don't win because I have to render two videos in one day and edit them. But I mean, hey, whatever. But anyway, let's get started. Last episode, we did poems. They argued, stuff like that. Let's just get started because this, this might be a long episode. I don't know. I'm trying not to make this episode so fucking long. All right. Last episode was 40 minutes. I'm not trying to do that again, but it might happen. Anyway, sorry about what uh, happened earlier. Eh? What do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki, I remember you told me yesterday that they sometimes bicker, but are all their arguments normally that bad? A little guilty, uh, yeah. I feel a little guilty as I ask her, as I know she doesn't like talking about conflict. A slight dip in the cheeriness of her voice as she replies. No, not at all. They have their differences, but it's the first time I've ever seen them fight like that. They're both wonderful people, I promise. You don't hate them or anything, do you? Oh, not at all. It's only normal for people to argue, I guess. I was just curious. After all, you know them better than I do. Sorry, let's have a relief sigh. You know, Zero, it's been so nice seeing you again. I didn't really think we'd get to sp spend so much time with one another again. Yeah, tell me about it. It's great to see you again, too. I don't really know when we started drifting or why. Guess it was just life coming between us. She nods, looking a little reflective. Still, I'm glad you let me join your club. I'm not going to lie. At first, I was a bit doubtful when you told me it was about literature. But hey, I guess it just goes to show that you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. She giggles, and I frown. Did I say something funny? <laughs> you, get that, you got that one from Natsuki, didn't you? I was just about to mention that. I was like, we got that from Natsuki. <laughs> what? Oh, right. She did say that yesterday. <laughs> Sarah might be, known, it might be known as a bit of an airhead, but sometimes she can really notice things that others don't. I wonder, what's it really like inside her head? Really sad and depressed. That's exactly what it's like inside her head. <laughs> uh, you haven't changed at all, Zero. You always knew how to make me laugh. I blush slightly. I've never really known how to react to that compliment, especially when it comes from someone of the opposite sex. I'm glad I'm still able to do that. <laughs> I'll be honest, though. I didn't think I'd make so many new friends by joining the club. Well, they're a really nice bunch. I'm not surprised. Yeah, a pretty warm welcome. She nods contently. Anyway, let's see what the future holds. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, see you tomorrow. These girls are all interesting characters, aren't they? Different personalities and a variety of, of writing styles. Yet, they're all united under the same club. I briefly wonder how Monica found all of them. In just two days, I feel like I've made progress with each member. Getting to know Yuri and Natsuki, and actually getting to talk to Monica a little bit. And of course, reuniting with an old friend. I never would have guessed this would all come from joining the club, but hey, I'm not complaining. I just hope that my writing improves over time, and I'll be able to write poems to a standard, to a standard more like theirs. Speaking of which, there's work to be done tonight. Let's do this. Alright. Let's go. I might see something. It's really deep in the same direction. It's the same starting time, so. Da 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 Looks like you're in a good mood today. Hehe. <laughs> I'm just not used to you being in the club, that's all. Is that so? Well, it's nice to see you so cheery. Anyway, what's new? Um, well, I'm actually kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? Hmm. Raise an eyebrow and Sarah notices. <laughs> um, Zero, why are you looking at me like that? Well, Sarah, I have a nagging suspicion that... You're only dragging me along because you don't have any money. <laughs> And you just want me to and want me to buy you a snack. What? I would never do that. Oh really? Now let's see your purse. Huh? Your purse. Let's see it. 
<laughs> um. Sarah laughs awkwardly as she pulls out her purse. She opens, she opens with it and dumps its contents onto the desk. Two small coins fall out. Tisk tisk tisk. The little ruse might have actually worked had Sayori not pulled it on me numerous times when we were younger. The amount of time she managed to trick me into buying her another ice cream. <laughs> I guess some things never change. Nice try, Sayori. No fair. How would you guess? <laughs> now, wouldn't you like to know? Let's just call it intuition. In response, she sticks her tongue out at me. Typical. <laughs> <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice she was eavesdropping. Her face is in her book, as always. Uh, I wasn't listening or anything. I was just something in my book. Yuri. Tells you to let me borrow some money. That's... That's none of my business, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. It's shameful to manipulate people into doing or buying things for you. Wow, that's a little harsh. I'm only messing around with Sayori after all. <laughs> I was like, oh jeez, Yuri, why you gotta be so mean? I was just I was just playing. <laughs> I was playing around with her, making her question her life choices. Uh did I just I didn't mean that. That came out much harsher than I intended. Sorry, I just well uh oh. Yuri blushes in embarrassment, looking away from us while playing with a strand of her hair. It looks like she might be a bit ashamed of how she acted yesterday. <laughs> you know, it's okay to be honest sometimes. You should have always keep the, you should always keep things that bother you to yourself. That's there's no way you could think that after You're right though. I shouldn't trick people into buying me things. Funny how your ten year old self didn't see it that way. Yuri lets out a small laugh, covering her mouth with her hand, even the way she laughs is so shy and proper. Uh, is this mischiev mischievous behavior something Sarah used to display, display as a child then? Oh yeah, although back then, back then I fell for it time and time again. You wouldn't believe how much candy you say where he managed to trick me out of. Ah, don't make me sound so mischievous, Zero. <laughs> although those candies were so good. <laughs> I'm surprised. Sayori, coming from you, I guess there is a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? Hehehe. <laughs> What's going on here? No, oh, nothing much. Sayori here was just up to some mischief. Oh? Yeah, she tried to trick me into buying her a snack. Hey, that's not true! Monica smiles wryly and turns to me. <laughs> I'm assuming this isn't the first time? Well, you'd be right. We all share a little chuckle at that. Well, everyone except Sayori does. <laughs> hey, you guys are being really mean! Okay, okay, we're sorry. But you did bring this upon yourself. Yeah, I know. But in my defense, I'm really hungry! <laughs> well... Nasuki chimes in. If you're really that hungry... You can have this if you want. She offers up a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori immediately snatches that out of her hands. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you! <laughs> Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. Mm. Sayori suddenly claps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue. Ha! <laughs> you're going through a lot over just one cookie. Nasuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Uh, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Hmm. Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. <laughs> but yours is chocolate. <laughs> Just, that's a good reason. But yours is chocolate. <laughs> yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy you shared this one with me. He. <laughs> Sarah gets out of her seat and goes by Natsuki and wraps her arm around her. Ah, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie's still in hand. Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sarah off of her. Um, oh, Sarah just teleported. <laughs> Sarah suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Nazi's cookie. H hey, did you seriously just do that? Hehehe. <laughs> Mouthful, Sarah trots away to safety. Harry, Monica, and I laugh as well. Geez, such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sarah to quit taking my stuff? Sayori, you know you shouldn't do something like that without permission. Monica scolds Sayori. I know, I know. I'm sorry, Natsuki. But it was so good. Okay, wait, so this time this is different because originally Monica wasn't in the club room yet, but this time she was already here. So I, I just realized what was a different part of this scene. <laughs> hey! Everyone but Natsuki chuckles. <laughs> These things happen a lot, Monica? A little bit too much, to be honest. <laughs> Don't worry, it's all in good fun. Good fun is teasing each other from time to time, not stealing food. <laughs> oh, calm down, it's no big deal. Hmm. 
Now she pouts in her seat. Everyone calms down and quickly returns to their normal activities. Sarah has ma already managed to finish the entire cookie. <laughs> Nasuki gets up and heads to the closet. Nuri's already lost in her book. Oh shit, I didn't even read that. <laughs> so you ready? Huh? Oh, right. I wasn't expecting Nasuki to want to start reading so quickly. Not that I wasn't looking forward to it. Well, let's get going. Alright, I'll follow you. Nasuki excitedly walks over to the closet as I trail behind. You're gonna like this, Volume Zero. All that overarching plot you've been wanting, finally? <laughs> Monica! What? Something wrong? I glance out of the closet and immediately notice the problem. Oh, well, Nazi's boxes are sitting on the top shelf. Uh-oh. <laughs> Did you move all my stuff again? <laughs> About that. The teacher got mad because of how much room your stuff was taking up and moved, moved it around. I was going to try and put it back, but I didn't have enough time this morning. Sorry. Ugh, that's just great. Nazi attempts to reach the top shelf with little success. She moves around some of the school supplies on the lower shelves to make room. <laughs> there, that's plenty of room. I'm moving these back down. I notice a collapsible stool hanging on the side of the closet wall. Here, use this. I take the stool off the wall and hand it to Natsuki, who quickly props it up and hops on. The stool's just barely high enough to allow Natsuki to retrieve one of the boxes. She uses her fingertips to inch the box toward the edge of the shelf. Once she gets a good grip on it, she quickly hops off the stool. <laughs> See? Easy. Natsuki holds the box up triumphantly before placing it on one of the lower shelves. Do you want me to get the rest of them? I can handle it myself. I just need something taller. Nasuki pokes her head out of the closet and scans the room. All the chairs are attached to desks, so it would be impossible to get them in the closet. Aha! She heads for the teacher's desk and retrieves the computer chair sitting behind it. I watch as she wheels it into the closet and proudly hops on. Oh, and it's this scene again. I told you I didn't need your help. I'm perfectly capable of doing this on my own. Well, Since the computer chair is on wheels, it swivels from side to side as Nasuke stands on it. Steady, steady. Nasuke clearly doesn't want any help, so I just idle in the doorway of the closet and watch. As she shakily grabs boxes and places them on the lower shelves. Ah, here it is. Nasuke pulls the parfait girl box set off the shelf. She then opens the box and digs around it, digs around in it with one, one, and while holding the box with the other. Ah. Suddenly the chair starts to give out under Nazi's feet. Yeah. I rush over to Nazi, placing my hands on the back of the chair and propping my foot under one of the wheels. Luckily, I managed to steady the chair and prevent Natsuki from falling off. Oh, we saved her this time. The Mongo, on the other hand. Ah, the box! Oh. I feel books shower down on my head and my back. The heart covers leaving a painful bruise. Natsuki quickly jumps off the chair, so instead she drops the books on us. <laughs> instead of herself. God, look what you did, idiot. What I did? You made me drop the books everywhere. You would have fallen out of the chair if I didn't save you. I would have been fine. Nasi turns back to the closet, reflecting on the events that just occurred. She turns back, she lowers her head. Okay, maybe you did help me from falling. So, uh, thanks. You're welcome. Now, we should probably clean this mess up. We both get on our knees and be cleaning up the spilled manga novels. Luckily, none of them got damaged in the fall. Oh, this time they didn't get damaged, okay. There are only around 15 or so books, so we finish fairly quickly. Once everything's back in the box, Nasuke puts the box back on the shelf, but not before I snag the second volume. Still want to read? I hold the book up. The expression Nasuki makes is priceless, and I can't help but smile. Aw, give me a little smile. <laughs> all in all, I'm pretty satisfied with this manga. Nasuki was right. It gets really good in the second volume. I was right, wasn't I? Crap, she read our mind! <laughs> <laughs> yep, that was pretty good. <laughs> Told you so. Okay, everyone. It's time to share poems again. I sigh. Guess I'll read some more later. You sound like you're excited. <laughs> I am. I give Natsuki away before heading back to my seat and grabbing my poem. Alright, as usual, we share with Natsuki first. That is the only, that is the logical one. But you know, we're always going to save. Because you, you always save, guys. You never know when my power could just go out. Like, you know? <laughs> oh, are you sad? Natsuki reads my poem. But now, by now, she had to read it, have read it, have read it, have read it. <laughs> she had to have read it at least twice. Uh, is everything alright? Huh? Oh, yeah. Um. Nasuki looks down at my poem. It's good. Okay? Really good. There, I said it. Then what's the problem? This wasn't how it was supposed to go. I was supposed to be the pro. You were supposed to write like me. Instead, you just... Nasuki's voice trails off. Natsuki, I do write like you. Huh? My style is heavily influenced by yours. Did you not notice that before? Um. Nasuki hears my poem once more. Her face turns completely red as she reads, and once she finishes, she looks down at the floor. 
Natsuki, I don't think you give yourself enough credit. Not only is your poetry really good, but you also fight against the trend of normal poetry and you fight hard. That alone is pretty impressive. Don't sell yourself short. You are the pro. I'm just trying to live up to your skill level. Asi takes a moment to adjust what I just said. R really Really? Uh, thanks. No problem. Now, let's see your poem. Yeah, sure. I don't get it. Okay. <laughs> I don't get the poems. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get why people... I don't get why people will hate on good rhymes. They act like it's dumb and a waste of their time. I don't diss their free verse or deep subject types, but be dark all you want, just keeping your gripes. Oh sure, you can tell me if you have a problem, just keep it constructive and things will be awesome. I'd like you to know that our readers will differ. There is no best style. You smug old glue sniffer. <laughs> you smug old glue sniffer. My poems may be simple and often straightforward, but charm can be found in such whimsy and order. Not all poems can be as complex as you like. If you think otherwise, you can go take a hike. What about kids or the elderly too? Some read for fun, I guess unlike you. <laughs> Let us just go and enjoy what is written. You won't like it at all. That much is given. But g give things a chance, and you might may find something nice. Just open your mind, and that will suffice. Oh, that was a wonderful poem. I love that poem. <laughs> yeah, clap it up. <laughs> I, I say clap it up. It is 1 o'clock in the morning. What am I doing? <laughs> no clapping. All right, everyone snap. <laughs> so, what do you think? Uh, I mean, it's well written, at least. I'm not sure how I should confront Natsuki about this. But to say that she still holds a grudge from yesterday would be an understatement. God forbid Yuri see this poem. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a given. But yeah, you could say that I was inspired. It really felt good to pound out these lines. Poetry's an amazing and emotional outlet, you know. Uh-huh. Anyway, I can't wait to show Yuri this poem. No. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> wait, hold on. <laughs> what? Natsuki, do you really think that showing her this poem is a good idea? You're really going at her throat with this. Don't you think that you should work out your do you should work out your issues with her? Yeah, but she never tries to see things my way. So why should I? I think that's the wrong way to go about this. Relationships are a two-way street. Both people have to work to make things right. Why don't you try being the bigger person and just talk to her first? But I already know what that she's not going to try. She's just always so preoccupied with looking complicated and smart. It's clear to me that she doesn't even care if anyone can understand her, including me. You can't understand her if you don't even try. She might speak using a more complex vocabulary, and she may have mannerisms that seem strange to you. But from what I've seen of the both of you, she's more similar to you than you may think. Eh? That's... Are you ju aren't you judging a book by its cover right now? Uh, wh whatever. You can't hold this grudge forever, you know. At least think of Monica and Sayori. Fine, I won't show Yuri my poem. Are you happy? <laughs> I won't be happy until you try to talk to her. She's not going to bite, Natsuki. Ugh. Alright, I get it. I'll try to talk to her sometime. Thanks. You're gonna do the club proud. Shut it. But, you know, I'm glad that we share a similar writing style, at least. It's cool to talk to someone who, well, gets me. I've been enjoying sharing with you. So, so consider yourself lucky. <laughs> All right, I will. I'll be looking forward to tomorrow. S same here. Aww. She likes sharing with us. That's adorable. <laughs> Ooh. I really like this one, Zero. Better than yesterday's, huh? Better than yesterday's, huh? Mm-hmm. Let me think. Mm -hmm. Let me think. I don't know. <laughs> I guess I like them both. He. <laughs> That's not very hopeful, you know. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm probably not the best person to get feedback from. Monica once told me it's impossible to really write a poem because they're so subjective. So I just judge poems through, through, through my heart. I guess I look for how the poem makes me feel. I hope that helps. <laughs> uh, sort of. I guess some feedback is better than no feedback, right? Right. Speaking of feedback, do you want to read my poem now? Sure. Is it bottles? It is bottles. Is the happy thoughts and the... Is it happy thoughts? It's the same one, right? Digging, scrapping, I blow the dust all the bottle caps. Okay, echo, echo, echo inside my head. Okay, so it's the same exact. So Sayori still has all the same poems. Wow, Sayori. I didn't expect this at all. Did you really write this? Of course I did. 
Remember, I said I'd write the best poem ever yesterday. Well, here it is. After all, Monica has taught me a lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. So that's what this poem's about. I suppose that much was obvious. Unlike your and Monica's poems, yours are relatively simple to figure out. So, uh, if I've interpreted this correctly, you're basically doing everything you can to keep your friends happy? Yay, you got it! I really enjoyed writing this one. Just getting your thoughts out onto paper and turning them into a poem. It's like magic. Well, I think it's amazing. You should be really proud of it. Yeah, thank you, Zero. That means a lot. I didn't think it was that good, though. Nah, that's great. Seriously. I can't help but notice that the latter half of the poem isn't quite as cheery. In fact, it's somewhat alarming. A very dark contrast in the cheeriness that I'm used to with Sayori. Although, uh, maybe I'm looking into this a little too much, but the end of the poem is pretty dark. And you said you'd been in touch with your feelings recently, so I'm just checking. Is everything okay? Of course, silly. I forgot to tell you, I really like writing about bittersweet stuff. Stuff that isn't just happy or just sad. A mixture of the two. And this poem shows what I mean. It's just my writing style. Ah, oh, okay. That makes sense, I guess. Well, either way, I'm glad you're enjoying writing so much, so I hope you keep it up. Good to have a hobby. Of course, and hopefully you'll also stick with it. So I look forward to seeing all the poems you write in the future. No guarantees there, but just from seeing the passion in Zuri's eyes, it's hard to be pessimistic. I do like that this MC also kind of cares more about Sayori. Like, he's he's not as dense. Because, like, the before MC, he saw Sayori's bottles poem and was like, Wow, Sayori, this doesn't seem like you at all. But he just says this doesn't seem like you, but doesn't see the signs of, Well, if Sayori wrote this, she might not be okay. <laughs> like, I like how this MC's like, Hey, are you okay? You know, is everything alright? He's making sure that his best friend is okay. <laughs> Unlike the old MC. Hi again, Zero. I'm trusting that the club's been doing you very well. Been doing you very, doing you well. <laughs> doing you very well. <laughs> Same answer as yesterday. <laughs> That's nice to hear. So how's the writing going? All right, I guess. Just all right. Hmm. No, I guess I should say that's revolutionized my world and brought color into my previously lifeless or er, life. <laughs> well, I say that, but the club, not the poetry, really has made my days more interesting. <laughs> okay, okay, can it with the sarcasm, Mister. <laughs> At least you're not hating it, though, right? Nah, it's been an interesting experience, at least. <laughs> it gives me a new hobby, too. It gives me a new hobby to do. I'm happy that you're applying yourself, at least. Maybe so soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on it. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure. Here you go. I'll give a poem to Monica. All right. I can see that you put, into, you put in some good effort there. You wrote in the same style as yesterday, huh? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> no need to look so nervous. I was just saying, Hatsuki must have rubbed off on you. I mean, it's only natural that someone's writing style rub off on me, given how I've been spending spending time with all the more experienced writers. Mm, that does make sense. But I wouldn't want you to feel forced to imitate everyone's styles just to pander to us either. So just write, write however you want. Anyway, Hatsuki's poems are cute because they tend to put an emphasis on meter, on meter, rhyme scheme, and simple straightforward words. These all contribute to giving her poetry a more sing-song quality. You could say that her poems become almost musical with their in inherent beats. Yeah, they actually do. That's why I kind of sing them like with a, with like a little song. Of course, the words she uses are usually just plain cute as well. <laughs> this is all just to say that your poetry is the same qualities. Huh? Yeah, I guess I do do some of that stuff. I just like playing around with the, sy with the syllables and trying to get my poems to flow. That's definitely one of the main differences between poetry and prose. Or prose or pose? I think it's pose. In poetry, you're able to change up how you want with words to be said to be said and even perceived. And speaking of flow, have you ever tried never noticed that rap is kind of like another form of poetry? I never thought about it that way. But yeah, I guess song lyrics are just another form of poetry. Especially rap, since they need to focus on wordplay and fitting lines into rhymes. Mm-hmm. I actually used to hate rap music. Well, I don't think that's too a common a, a sentiment. Yeah. <laughs> Fortunately, some of my friends got more into it and helped me, helped me keep an open mind. It might sound kind of silly, but I wish I had a rapper in the literature club. <laughs> I just think it would be really interesting to see what they came up with. Well, Monica, here comes MC Zero. Okay, no, I'm not doing that. Iceman Zero. <laughs> <laughs> if I find any rappers, I'll let you know. <laughs> but in the meantime, you want to show me your poem now? I think it's about time we let your poem shine. Sure thing, Zero. I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. 
Pressurized? Pressurized, I think. This feeling, it won't stop. The vast hollow emptiness, crushing, suppressing, restraining, boundless, everlasting void, an endless torment of suffocating vacuum. This pressure, it won't stop. Relentless, tireless force, stretching, erasing, restraining, atmosphere, Pas Pascat? Pa Pascal? Tor torn. The tor? Or torn? Like looking down from a, from a mountaintop. Like looking for a reason from a real madhouse. An endless poem of suffocating. Absence. Oh god. <laughs> hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? Really? They're freeform, too. That's what you call it. <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just the kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. The other girls don't do this stuff nearly as much as you, at least. Hmm, yeah, I get you could say that, you're, that they're a bit more traditional when it comes to their structure. But I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines, really, sh really short, makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. It fragments everything and leaves a dis in dissonant tone with the reader. I see. I guess there's th there's a lot of things you can do with poetry. Definitely. Poetry is a very much an art form. You're meant to craft poems using never-before-seen combinations of words to interpret the world around you. You really love poetry, huh? <laughs> Maybe you should write a poem about poetry someday. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. <laughs> anyway, it's still hard for me to tell what your poems are about. Hmm, sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid it's not that good? Now, we've all had the experience at, the, that at this point with the poetry discussions and all, but it can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much, you put so much into. If you find other people who enjoy writing, though, then sharing becomes a lot less, a lot easier. Because instead of just telling you that your writing is good, or okay, or bad, they'll want to focus more on everything that went into it, and the things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way, and it'll make you want to continue improving. Yeah, it definitely is more helpful getting real criticism and feedback rather than just empty words. I guess I've really hit the mother load with the literature club. <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. There you go. Now for Yuri, and we might have to end the episode. <laughs> God damn, this fucking takes a while, doesn't it? Because I don't know, because I feel like the, the part after we share a poem is probably way too long. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I'm sorry if I've offended you. Yeah? I said that Natsuki's writing style wasn't the best, but it seems that you prefer that style to mine. Oh no, those are Yuri starts not liking us. <laughs> so in a way, I was saying that your writing style is bad as well. Well, not liking us, but like she starts thinking we hate her. Yuri, that's a bit of a leap. I hope you can forgive me. Yuri, it's okay for you to have an opinion. That doesn't make you evil. I should have known this would happen. If I try to prepare my words, I just sound awkward and weird. But if I just try to speak my mind, I come off as unfiltered and people dislike me anyway. So, please don't force yourself to be around me. I know this is what Monica wants. But it's clear that you'd be happier if you spent more time around the others. Yuri. Please. You don't have to pity me. It's okay. Besides, I have my books with me. They'll never abandon me or leave me alone. They're all I've ever needed, anyway. Yuri shows me a plant of smile before turning around and heading back to her own desk. What? Wow, okay, we don't even get Yuri sharing with us. I really didn't mean to upset her, but no matter what I say, she won't listen to me. She really seems to think I hate her, and that I couldn't be further from the truth. I sigh to myself. All I can do is accept that's how she is. If she actually wants to be alone, I have to respect that request and leave her be. Well, maybe we will have time for stuff. Well, fuck. I, I, I'm pretty sure the other game, I think you had, you at least got two poems from Yuri, and then she left. The third day was when she, you couldn't talk to her anymore, right? Like, that's what I remember. I don't remember, like, getting one from her. I mean, good, I can't read her handwriting anyway. Do I want to end the episode here? Uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see, we'll see what this. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? Actually... Natsuki and I haven't shared yet. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. I can feel a storm coming on. Yuri hesitantly approaches Natsuki, who isn't meeting her eyes. And considering Natsuki's poem for today, it's no wonder that she doesn't want to share with Yuri. <laughs> Judging by Monica Suri's anxious expressions, they seem to be thinking along with the same lines as I am. Because <laughs> they all read it. <laughs> I can practically see Natsuki sweating pinballs. 
Meanwhile, Yuri appears to be blissfully unaware of the situation. I'd convince Natsuki to reconcile with Yuri, but if she sees Natsuki's poem, well, it's all over. So, so Natsuki, if I may... Uh, how about we do this tomorrow instead? I'm not uh, feeling well. It's my time of the month. Oh, okay. <laughs> what? I can practice the demonic and eternally face palming. <laughs> oh, is that so? I'm sorry, you must feel absolutely terrible if you can't even share your poem today. <laughs> you don't need to apologize. It's not your fault. I can definitely share tomorrow. Uh, well, even if you aren't well enough to share your own poem, would you like to see mine? I, um, wrote it thinking of our argument the other day. Oh yeah, we didn't even get to see it. I suppose that I wanted to show you I'm more open-minded than I may have appeared. As a way of repenting. I know it's not, it's not much, but hopefully this can contribute to a reconciliation between us. Although we may have our disagreements, I consider you as a friend. And friends forgive each other. Oh, I'm sorry if that's presumptuous of me to say. No, it's not presumptuous of you to say that. Just because I like, I, cause I'd like to consider you a friend too. So, you can hand over that poem then. With a shy smile, Yuri hands the sheet of paper in her hands over to Natsuki. As Natsuki reads the poem, her eyes widen. You, you're writing using rhyme and stuff, like me. You could say that you convinced me to practice adding more lyricism to my po to my poetry. Asuki looks like she's speechless for once. <laughs> Thanks, Yuri. It's awesome. There's really no need to thank me. Well, I'm really glad I got to know. I'm really glad. Oh, that's not that's not Yuri. <laughs> I'm really glad I got to know you. And I'll definitely have something to knock your socks off tomorrow. <laughs> and I'll be looking forward to that. I do hope that you feel better tomorrow as well, so that you could share your work with me then. <laughs> yeah, of course. That was a crisis, and that was a crisis and a half avoided. <laughs> I'm really glad that Natsuki and Yuri worked things out. It seems that Monica and Sarah feel the same way. It's good to see everyone working and getting along. Now that we're all done sharing, though, I have something to discuss with you all. Is this about the festival? <laughs> you could say that. Ugh, do we really have to do something? It's not like we'll be able to come up with something good. Yes, that's something I'm concerned about as well. With such little time left to prepare, I doubt we'll be able to put together anything good enough to attract new members. Yeah, we'll just end up embarrassing ourselves. Oh, don't worry too much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? <laughs> Nothing more than a few decorations. I'm going to sign some pamphlets we can hand out at the event. And Sarah's put some posters around the school. Okay, that's great and all. That doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. <laughs> oh, you don't know? We're going to put on a, po a poetry performance. A what? P um, Monica. Everyone's going to choose one poem to recite out loud. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite their poems, too. Yeah, I put a thing on the poster that says, bring your own poems. It's going to be so cool. Sarah pulls out a poster out of her bag and holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? Don't tell me you started putting those posters up already. Eh, well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, if you didn't even ask us before you started advertising, we never agreed to stand up in front of a bunch of random people and perform our poems. I agree with Natsuki. I could never, in my life, do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys, yes, let's, yes, let's please calm down and take a moment to think about it. I understand that you two haven't had much experience sharing your poems out loud, but I still think we should try our best. <laughs> Look around. Monica motions to all of us. We're all here because we have a passion for literature in this club. Don't you want to share that passion with other people? To inspire them to pursue the inner writer. Yeah! <laughs> It's all about exploring yourself and trying new things, all while having fun! Monica and I nod our heads in agreement. Natsuki and Yuri, on the other hand, remain silent. I guess that means it's my turn to say something. <laughs> I mean, I don't think it's that much to ask. As Monica said, we're all here because we care about the club and want to see it flourish. And if all, if all that means is a two-minute poetry performance, then I, th I think we can manage. Sorry, and Monica's face light up as I finish speaking. Hey, it, it isn't like we don't care about the club. It's just... Do we really have to perform? You know how hard it is to get new members. It's because people are just narrow-minded jerks. They don't even give a literature a chance. Who's to say this festival will be any different? I'm inclined to agree with Natsuki. I'm sorry, Monica. I know how much you want to do this, but I can't imagine performing in front of a crowd of strangers. Well, at least Yuri and Natsuki are proving they can agree on something. <laughs> Monica sighs. Her eyes closed. She rubs her temples. Look, guys, I know you're anxious. I understand that. I really do. To be honest with you, I'm a little bit nervous myself. <laughs> After all, it's my club, so people are going to judge me the most if the performance doesn't go well. Natsuki, if it makes you feel any better, 
Two of my friends will be coming along. They're lovely people. They won't judge you for your taste. I've known them for years. Trust me. Noski hops, turning away. She doesn't look particularly convinced. And Yuri, I know it's a scary thought, but I've thought of a way to ease you, in ease you into it. Hmm? Then why don't we start by practicing our poems to each other in the club? N no way! Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can, can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh, no. Nah, I'm still not buying it. There's just gotta be something else we can do. Yuri nods vigorously at Natsuki's words, anxiety written all over her face. But guys! <laughs> no, Sayori, it's okay. If you guys really think we can do better than a poetry performance, I'll gladly go along with an alternative. Oh shit, are we going for an alternative? So many ideas? An awkward silence fills the room. We all glance at each other anxiously before Sayori finally speaks up. Oh, we could... Sayori stops and thinks to herself for a moment. Wait, no, never mind. <laughs> that wouldn't work. Once again, the room falls silent. Well then, I guess we can't come up with something different after all. <laughs> oh damn, I guess no alternative. I was excited. Monica laughs, having to ease the tension in the room. I know you guys might not be the most on board of the idea, but I think it's our best option. Please, guys, please. Can you stop pressuring us? I'm honestly surprised Natsuki's putting up such a resistance. I know she was a little hot-headed, but even still. I'm not pressuring you, Natsuki. Both of them have raised their voice. Yuri looks a little startled, and Sarah looks anxious to intervene. Uh, guys, please, there's no need to get angry. Can't we just discuss this normally? Monica reflects on Sarah's words, looking a little shame of her outburst. I I'm sorry. I didn't mean to raise my voice. It's just, this festival is important to me, that's all. Ever since I created this club, I've always wanted to show other people. Natsuki, Yuri, I imagine you were both a little apprehensive when Zero joined, right? Oh, what the fuck? No, I clicked! <laughs> After all, he was an unfamiliar face. She smiles warmly at me. But look, he's integrating really well. She faces Natsuki. I mean, you two bonded over manga, right? The active recommendations from what I could gather, you both share a common interest. Hey, it's not like we bonded or anything. It was just nice to find someone else who likes manga. That's all. She shoots a look at Yuri. Uh, of course, how silly of me to forget. Anyway, maybe some of these new members might be a manga enthusiasts. Who knows? Surely you'd like to be able to share your, pa your passion with other people, right? Nasi shrugs half-heartedly. I suppose that'd be cool. Yeah. Monica beams. See? That's exactly my mentality. Wanting to share the things you like with new people. Yeah, yeah, I know that. It's just, are there really no other ideas? Remember, poetry performances are a pretty big part of this club. We want to show people what our, meaning, what our meanings are really like. If we just gave out posters or showed them our poems in writing only, it wouldn't really be a fair reflection. Nazi seems that there's no real way that she's going to win this. She grumbles something under her breath. So what do you think, guys? For me? For us? Ugh, fine. I still don't think this is a good idea, but fine. I'll do it. Just stop guilt-tripping me. <laughs> Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. And you, Yuri? Yuri nervously glances at each of our expected faces. But Monica, what if people start, uh, being inconsiderate and disturb us or laugh? I'm not surprised Yuri's worried about this. Oh, don't you worry. If anyone steps out of line, I'll put a swift stop to that. She has a stern glint in her eye and I have to repress a shiver. I'm glad she's with us. <laughs> it's a, oh god, it's angry Monica. <laughs> don't mess with angry Monica. <laughs> Yuri looks somewhat relieved, but it's clear she's still worried. She swallows and nods. I suppose I don't really have a choice, do I? <laughs> I shake my head. Okay, <laughs> I shake my head. Uh, nope. <laughs> I'll, okay, I'll do it. Yay, that's everyone. <laughs> You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh, goodness. You'll be fine. But anyway, let's move back on to the main event. While we have time, we'll each of you to choose a poem of your of, of yours to practice citing in front of each other. Yuri and Asuka exchange uneasy glances but don't say anything. <laughs> don't worry, I'll go first so everyone feels a little more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now let's see. Okay. Monica's not performing because it's about to be four because it's another 40 minute episode. My god. <laughs> There's so much content and writing and there's so much fucking text in this. I'm not saying it's like I hate it. It's just as a recording, it's just it's so bad. <laughs> because I have to make like 40 minute episodes that I actually want to make progress. <laughs> but yeah, I mean if you all if you guys watch all 40 minutes, then I guess I can keep releasing 40 minute episodes. But, yeah, anyway, I like the mod so far. It's pretty fun. But that is it for this episode. I'll see you guys next time. This is Zero. Peace.